Hey guys, uh, it's Darcy and Lang here, back here for another episode of 10 Minute Fitness. How you been, Lang? Good, man. How are you going? Yeah, good. I was, um, haven't been doing too much during the week, but I was thinking with everyone getting back to sport, everyone getting back to normal, um, this week might be a good week to talk about addressing um, pain and injuries and just give everyone a bit of a, a run through of where to start, the, the things to look at um, from a lower body and an upper body perspective and, and just dive a bit deeper into um, really how I would treat things and give everyone a bit of an insight to it as well. What do you think? That sounds good. That sounds um, like a really good topic because we often come into a bit of injury when we train and sometimes we can't really figure out is this an injury where I should sit out or is this an injury where uh, you can actually train through? So that's it's hard. Thing. Yeah. Really determining that, that a lot of the time what we do look at is I want you to be able to train and keep doing what you want to be able to do, but it's, it's cost versus reward. So if it's something where you're getting, say, we look at pain scales um, and we'll talk about just general pain, um, say back pain, knee, like joint more so than, than yeah. soft tissue injury is if you're consistently getting like a six out of 10 or it's increasing over the sets, it, it's something which you probably have to stop. But if, if it's something which is, is quite low and it doesn't really increase, it won't necessarily make it worse. It just might take it a little bit longer for, for you to get better as well. And sometimes I feel these niggles actually decrease as you train. Like you might feel more pain to say a six out of 10 before you start training. But then when you get into your session, that six becomes like a one. Yeah, and it, it really depends um, what's involved. And I reckon your kind of injuries, because you train a lot, they're, they're tendon injuries and they're things which respond really well to training. They warm up really well. After you've been doing a lot, they start to get stiff again. But in the mornings, yeah. they, they hurt a fair bit. Um, but mm. where, where we start, I'll, I'll run you through sort of what, what I usually look at. Um, All right. it takes a little bit, but say we had a lower body injury, maybe, um, back or, or knee, uh, is a good example yeah. of that or Achilles pain is another one. So they're all quite similar in, in the concept, um, because it all works together as well. So what we start off with first two weeks, all about managing pain and, and really setting the foundations to help increase function along the way. But the main thing we'd look at is we do some tests. We test above and below. So if we're looking at the knees, we'd look at um, squats, standing on one leg. We'd look at how your hips moving, and also um, depending on where we're getting pain, we'd work through that as well. So squats, wall sits, single leg stance, lunges, Bulgarian split squats is another test I use. Um, jumps and double leg jumps and single leg jumps. So you'll find that along that continuum, you'll get to, some would feel all right, depending on how sore it is. And we just want to get something which gives you a little bit of pain, but not like 10 out of 10 pain. You want something to just really test where you're at. And what we do from there is we start with the level before that. So the levels go isometrics, um, slow double leg movements, which can incorporate some isometrics as well. So Isometrics might be um, either a single leg hold, single leg hip hike, or a wall sit. Um, double, double leg exercise that we might start off with is a band squat. So band around your knees, um, squatting down, pushing your knees out. This is really good because what you're getting is you're getting isometric lateral movement, but you're getting the up and down movement as well. So you're starting to incorporate some of the slower double leg movements. So from there we go to a goblet squat. So starting to load it a little bit, getting rid of that isometric to, um, to the side. And then we start to work towards um, speeding it up and going towards split stance and single leg stuff. So you've got from your um, goblet squat, we've got a lunge. Um, so what it is, is it's more joint angles through the knee for, for backs. We're starting to get to split stance stuff and for ankles, you're starting to push a range a little bit more as well. So it all, all works in quite well together. And then from there, we've got our rear foot elevated split squat or the Bulgarian split squat. And you get quite a big joint angle with that. So we just go off pain. Um, you won't, you'll find you won't get there in the first two weeks usually with that, but appointment by appointment or session by session, we can just add a little bit. And then after that, 
Um, we've got uh, double leg jumps. Um, depending on pain, you can start working form stuff earlier on. And we add in the, the double leg jumps later on. Um, really looking for height and some good performance. And then our single leg jumps as well. Um, probably the thing I miss there, running. If you can lunge pain-free, you can run. Usually, that's that's a rule. So, that I know that's a really handy rule. Yep. Yeah, covered a lot there. How how do you reckon? Like, did you have any questions about that? How that sort of yeah. So obviously, you did mention uh, two weeks uh, is like your initial initial treatment phase, um, and you're not going to get uh, to 100 percent in the two weeks time. But have you had clients where some instances after two weeks they feel great, they feel like they're pain free, and then they decide to go back into the activity and they get disheartened that it started again? And are they back to square one if they just say uh, they're not careful and they um, do something out of place and they feel a, a high level of pain for the day? Um with that you find that a lot of the time after two weeks we can get the pain right down the issue is if you're doing things if you're pushing it just a little bit too hard because it's really tempting it's frustrating like you, you want to be able to do the stuff you used to be able to do but if you keep sort of like banging your head against the wall doing the stuff which is hurting and it, it'll gradually go up it'll be like three out of ten pain four out of ten pain and then before you know it it's a like a seven those are the ones that go um backwards a little bit in terms of that but what we look at in those first two weeks with the isometrics, they're not things that you would do um, just for those first two weeks. They're really tools that can help um, manage your pain along the way. So say you've got knee pain and we do wall sits. Along the way, if you're starting to get a little bit of knee pain with the lunges, if we look at your exercise order, we might warm up with some, some wall sits, get your knees feeling pretty good. That might be a one or a two out of 10 pain with the lunges to start. But we do the wall sits and then pain free or, or, or minimal pain that's that's what they're there to help with and they can manage with that but to answer your question yes we do we do see that sometimes if we we don't continue on with the extra strength afterwards um mm -hmm. and we just ignore the signs and the symptoms that your body is giving you it can go a bit backwards but usually by keeping on top of it um, we, we have our sessions quite close together the first couple of weeks. So it might be like a couple of days time after the first one. And we work through a couple of different isometrics, um, all based on the, the testing that we do. Um, and then after the first couple of weeks, we, we're generally at a point where it, it is settled enough as long as we don't push it too far. <laughs> yeah. 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 That sounds pretty uh, logical. So, Pretty much, if you're feeling high levels of pain during your training, you step back a little bit. And then as it dissipates over the uh, days and weeks, you can step it up a bit. But don't be too hasty to overload it too quickly. And that's where you often run into the increased pain and going backwards a bit, right? Yeah, and it, it just means it takes longer. That's that's the whole thing. Like if you're doing heavy squats five days a week and it for the sake of two weeks to pull it back a little bit, it, It'll take two weeks or so to sort of start getting back into it, maybe a little bit longer, or otherwise it'll take like eight, 10 weeks and you're sort of still squatting heavy, but we're not really getting anywhere with that. Yes, um, yeah. And it, it seems it seems counterproductive, but by taking it slow, you're just allowing the adaptation and you're going to get that improvement um, quite quickly in terms of the whole scheme of things as well. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I've had some personal uh, experiences with going too hard, but just even you know leaving your ego out the door and instead of doing your normal heavy set you might just go up to something rpe scale and you know where the pain doesn't actually exist and you realize within a few weeks it resolves because you've given the uh, structure time to adapt i think that's the main takeaway isn't it it is and there's, there's no harm in in coming in doing a session cruising through and coming out feeling really good like it's not a waste of a session either it's um it's good to not train like bring down one rms or maximal sets every every session it, it's it's nice to just cruise through and allow for those adaptations to come as well um have you come across any injuries that will stay with you for 
a very persistent time. So just say like bursitis, for example, that can stay with you for the entirety of your life. Isn't that true? Um, it's all about how it's managed. I think it's a bit of a mindset thing. So if you feel like you're not going to get better, it's a lot harder to, to get someone to see improvement with that. Um, but things like hip bursitis is actually when you've got the right thing can be managed really well. So hip bursitis brings into back pain. It's inflammation bursitis and, and tendinopathy or tendonitis is really similar. They, they sit in the same sort of spots and the isometrics are things that really help them. But if you're not loading and you sort of just rest it and going back into doing things, that's where we get the issues because the tendons need the load to get better. So that's where you get the ongoing repetitive load. However, things that are really hard or take a while to get better, plantar fasciitis, so pain under the foot can take a while. Um, generally, Achilles, unless you've had a tear, like Achilles tendinopathy is not too bad. Same with um, patella tendinopathy, so under the knee and and glute, um, a glute tendinopathy. So those ones are just inflammation through the tendon. They're not too bad to get better, depending on what you do. Um, other ones, shoulders can take a while, um, especially getting back to overhead movement. And but generally, oh, and back pain's not too bad either. Depend depending on what's going on. A lot of them you can settle it quite a bit, and if you got the exercise. And, as you said, it's a mindset thing and um, a lot of environmental factors like stress and, um, you know, just a change in lifestyle can affect back pain. Isn't that right? Yeah, 100%. Stress, um, exercise adherence. If, if you're really good, because early on, it's a lot of stuff to do. It's in terms of not the time spent doing it, but how often you need to do it. It'll be exercise like twice a day or, and more if it is getting sore. So for a lot of people who feel time poor, um, or just struggle getting around to doing the exercises. They're, they're easy things to do, which you'll feel better straight after. And they're not very time consuming, but it, it's just like the mental barrier of having to do them, say morning or night, or if you've been sitting for a little while, it'll take you two minutes, but getting around to that is, a, is another thing which, which doesn't help. And then um, conflicting, oh, not conflicting, Evan, conflicting advice and not sticking at things for long enough is probably... The other thing, sometimes you see people who say, oh, I've tried everything, but they've kind of tried everything for two weeks and it doesn't give it long enough for any of them to work. But yeah. it's one of those things, like, you know, when you get clients, yet they train for three weeks and they're real frustrated and like, oh, I haven't seen any results. And then the next, the next week they come back and they're, they're loving it. They've seen it. <laughs> it's, it's one of those yeah. things. <laughs> I know a key is it's just to stick to it. It's trust the pro process yeah and I, I think if us as trainers or practitioners develop those expectations early um so we like to say like oh look you got to persist with it a couple times a day or a couple times a week for three to four weeks it'll be a week after you get frustrated and you start to see the results or you but the, even the first session when you tell them oh it might be a little bit sore the next day instead of them waking up and feeling like the worst thing ever. I feel like I've been hit by a bus actually knowing um, what they feel like or that they might feel that way. Um, help helps them out and having them know that it's okay too. It's yeah, it can be stressful yeah. otherwise. Very valid point. Very valid point. I had something else I had in my mind that I wanted to ask you, but um, I can't, can't forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, while you have a bit of a think, I'll run you through because uh, that was sort of the lower body progressions we had. Upper bodies, um, quite similar, but it's a little bit different because upper body doesn't really matter if you're working one side or two sides at the same time. Like your arms are a bit more independent than your legs. Mm -hmm. um, but pretty much with that, rather than working single leg to double leg, we just work angles. So we work shrugs down by your sides rows below, shoulder height. Um, then we start to do some like lateral raises, front raises, um, pull downs, um, generally quite good. And neutral grip pressing, shoulder pressing comes before um, bench pressing and push-ups and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. just less of a, in here, like in nice and close is nowhere near as impinging and sore as when you bring it out here. That's usually sort of the last stuff is out up high and, yeah. and back as well. So that's probably 
the main difference. Um, you find lower body stuff is so much simpler as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, your shoulder joint is so mobile, and a lot of things happen to cross over there, and uh, it can be tricky, can't kind it? Of... They can, yeah. And knees way easier to treat, or way easier to manage than elbows, and yeah, hips are heaps easier than than shoulders. But if you look at them, it sounds weird, but they're pretty much. Your arms are a small bit of leg when you look at them, apart from like no patella on your elbow. They look like, <laughs> they're quite similar. They've all got hips, have got those little stabilizers, same with your shoulders. And then, yeah, they, they work relatively similar, just smaller versions, so a little bit more complicated up higher in the body. Oh, that's really well explained. Um, I still can't remember the question I was going to ask you. <laughs> but um, is there anything else that you would like to add? to the rehab process? Um, probably main takeaways. Trust trust the process would be, be the first thing. Um, start slow, be conservative. Um, and you find that if you do your hard work, like a lot of the good work in the first two weeks, it's really going to set you up um, in terms of long-term benefits. Um, usually you look at, for a lot of pain things, 12 weeks, you can see a pretty significant difference. but it depends on the person. Everyone's different. There's no sort of one size fits all in terms of this programming, even with the isometrics. Um, so it's important that the, the testing's done before um, and then you look for like in, instantaneous improvement in, in pain or range or both. It's a good way to tell what, what is going to work or what's really going to help. Mm. Um, that sounds really good. I think... Um... I've had my personal experiences going too hard too early and other people, which I know from clients, they have a bit of pain and they're scared to come back to the gym. So there's two extremes. You've got to be in the middle, right? Yeah. Yeah. You've got to just be, be smart about it. It sounds, um, yeah. 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 But the other thing is more people like me, um, other trainers, other like physios, exercise physiologists, whatever you do, Get other people to treat you. It's so hard to treat yourself. For some reason, I keep thinking I'm an exception to all these rules and it never, never works. <laughs> <laughs> you don't follow your own advice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's easier. Just get someone else to do it because you're your own worst client, apart from maybe um, sometimes family members a bit hard as well. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So have a run through a listener's question. Yeah. Let's, uh, who's... Who's our list? Yeah, we'll go through our listeners' question now. Who's who you've got our listeners' question? Me. I've written through. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've personally written through. <laughs> what do you think about um, anti-inflammatories and then training through it? Um, rather than using anti-inflammatories, what I would suggest would be looking at your exercise order. So. Uh, natural pain relief that we've got and when you find the right ones which can make a big difference um, would be our isometrics so if you've got yeah. um, isometrics you can use as a warm-up say minimum effective dose studies show five by 45 seconds which is just ridiculously long three by 20 it's pretty good um, it takes yeah. you six minutes pick three exercises um, if you've got someone who can have a look or have an assess and where you feel better through those joint pains so black Squatting, good example would be um, some wall sits, um, some single leg holds or knee hugs. It, it just depends. Um, and maybe some like calf raise holds just to loosen those joints up a little bit. You, you want stuff which works the muscles, usually just a little bit above or a little bit of below the joint, which is going to make you feel a lot better. And you might find rather than feeling like an old man every time you train or an old lady, you'll um, feel a little bit younger. <laughs> So the answer is isometrics. Yeah, that's yes. everything. <laughs> All right, I think that should wrap it up for this week. Yeah, it's been a good episode. So if anyone's got any questions, make sure you send them through. Um, oh, long, we should rename the brand 20 Minute Fitness. <laughs> yeah, <that> 20, minutes? <laughs> 20 minutes. But um, my Instagram's Darcy Smith EP, and yours is underscore Lane Blake. Thanks for listening, guys. All right, catches.